Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at converting a sort of ho-hum image into something that's a whole lot better using both the accented edges and halftone filters. This is another one of the tutorials in my Fix a sort of ho-hum image series. What I'm doing in this series is taking some images that have some nice aspects to them, but there are some problems with those images, and turning them into something just a little bit different in Photoshop. So let's see how this image started out. It was actually quite a bit larger than it is now, and I really like the window in the middle of it, but I wasn't really fancying this brick work around it. So let's see what we're going to do with this image. The first thing we're going to do is to crop it and straighten it a little bit. I wanted this element in the middle of the image to be a little bit straighter. And then we're going to apply a couple of filters to it. We're using a halftone circle filter, but we're also using an accented edges filter, which is helping this filter do its work. And we're sampling the filter colors from the image itself. And you can have this image a couple of ways. You can have it using this overlay blend mode here or the color blend mode here. So we've got a couple of versions of it for you. So let's get started on working with the image and we're going to go back to the original. And the first thing I'm going to do is to crop and straighten it. I think it needs a little bit of straightening. So I'm going to convert the background layer into a regular layer by clicking on it. I'm going to click on the crop tool and then I'm just going to drag on the image until I've got it around about where I want it to be straightened to. And then because I want to crop it, I'm going to drag down on the cropping handle. What I really want to keep is the interesting detail and get rid of everything that's not interesting. So I'm going to take these four windows behind. I'm going to take this element and these elements below it, but leave practically the rest of the brickwork out of the image. So again, just before I finally crop it, I'm going to make sure I'm happy with that. And I'll just click to select that as the crop. And now we're ready to go ahead and apply the filters. Some of the filters in Photoshop actually use the foreground and background color for the effect. And one of the filters we're going to use is going to do just that. So to set my foreground and background colors, first of all, I'm going to just click on the foreground color swatch here. And I'm going to select the eyedropper tool. And this allows me to sample a color from the image. I have a five by five average sample selected here. That means that when I click on a color, I'm not clicking on the exact color under the cursor, but Photoshop is having a look at a five by five sample and giving me that particular color sort of average, and that's going to give me a better selection. So there's my brown. Just going to reverse these colors, and now let's go and get the green. I'm going to try and get a nice lightish green. So I'm pretty happy with that, but I do want the darker color as my foreground color before I go into my filters. Now, because I want the image itself to be still there so I can blend it back in later on, I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. And we're going to apply our filter to the duplicate layer. And a good way to do that is to actually convert this to a smart object first. Right click on it, convert to smart object, and that way, the filters will be able to be edited later on. Now, when I go to filter, filter gallery, that's grayed out. And the reason for this is that this image has come from Lightroom and it's a 16-bit image. Most Photoshop filters only work on 8-bit images. So I'm going to choose image mode, 8 bits per channel. And now that's converted to an 8-bit per channel image, the filter gallery is now available to me. Now, already selected are the filters that I'm going to apply, but I'm just going to remove that first one. Let's just size this so we can see what we're looking at. And the first filter we're going to use is Accented Edges. It's in this brush stroke collection. And what it does is give us a sort of sharpening, lightening of the edges in the image. So the edge brightness is bringing up the brightness in the edges if we take it down we're losing a lot of that brightness. And the edge width is giving us either really big edges or less big, crisper edges. 
and smoothness this is going to give me a sort of painterly effect almost like an oil painting filter in a way but we don't want it very smooth because we want to still say the detail and the architecture so I'm thinking 3, 4 for smoothness 3, 4 for edge width and edge brightness somewhere around 45 now while I'm in this dialog I can add multiple filters so having added my first filter I can just click here to add a new effect layer and that allows me to add a second filter what it's done though is just slammed the exact same one over the top and I don't want it to be the same so I'm going to target the second version of accented edges and this time I'm going to use half tone pattern Halftone Pattern is one of the filters, in fact most of these in the sketch area are those filters that use the existing foreground and background colour. In other words, it's going to use green and brown. To start off with, this is not looking like it's going to give us very much at all. I'm just going to turn off Accented Edges for a minute, but let's have a look so that we can focus on the Halftone. The Halftone that I'm using is a circle. Now that's a cylindrical half tone pattern that comes out from the center of the image and I can adjust the size of the radiating circles I don't want them to be really huge so I'm thinking 3 to 4 will be a good one for this image and the other slider is contrast and this allows us to bring in some contrast so that lighter areas are light, darker areas are dark so we're not getting this sort of overall just blah half tone circle added to the image but we're actually getting some of the underlying contrast in the images being used for this half tone pattern so I'm thinking probably around 4 and 39 is a good setting let's try it with its accented edges underneath it and you can see that accented edges is having effect on the resulting half tone pattern so it is actually doing something turn accented edges back on and before we leave here we can test other things so we could see if a bigger edge width is going to give us a better result so we can test out and see if edge brightness is going to affect the underlying image and hence the result with the half tone pattern filter which it does but I like it more bright and I do want it less smooth so I'm going to wind it back to where it was. I was pretty happy with those settings but you can see that you can actually come in here and experiment with how these two filters interact with each other. It is critical that they're this way around because if I take them around the other way you can see that the result is not quite the same. So yes we do want half tone pattern on top of accented edges. Now that we're done I'm going to click OK and because we've still got this image layer below we can now experiment with some blend modes to see if we can't get a better result than just this sort of duotone effect so I'm going to target normal and now I'm just going to press the down arrow key to test the blend modes and see what we get darken is giving us an interesting effect multiply will always be darker color burns destroyed the image so too has linear burn darker color it's pretty interesting lighten screen will always lighten the image color dodge a bit brighter color through the image linear dodge lighter color and overlay overlay is always going to be an interesting blend mode because it takes light colors in one direction and dark in another you can see in this area there is absolutely none of the half tone filter showing part of that is due to the half tone filter but also part of it will be due to the overlay blend mode being used the other blend mode that I thought was really interesting was down the bottom here so this is soft light hard light vivid light linear pin hard mix difference always give you a lot of color exclusion subtract divide hue saturation and this was one I kind of liked was the color it's a little bit of a sort of pastel effect if you like for the image but I kind of like that effect but again we're not seeing a lot of the half tone filter we've pretty much lost the half tone filter in the color effect and this is luminosity which is the last one of the blend mode so 
it's up to you what you like but I'm really quite happy with the overlay blend mode I really quite like that effect on the image if I want to see more of the original image underneath I can just dial down the opacity of this layer in fact I really like the opacity at quite a high level if I were finishing this image off I would probably add a final layer target this brown color I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool and drag out a rectangle through this image select inverse so that I have the edge selected and I'm going to dump this brown color in there with alt backspace option delete on the Mac I'm going to deselect my selection I'm going to blur it so I'll choose filter blur and I want a Gaussian blur because I want a nice softening of the edges of this image right now I'm just looking at the softening effect not worried about the fact that the color is not right and click OK now if I blend this in a multiply blend mode I'm going to get a darkening of those edges perhaps that blur wasn't quite enough let's go back into Gaussian blur and let's hit up the blur a little bit more so this was the starter image we've added a couple of filters to it and a sort of edge vignette effect and we've turned something that was a little bit ho-hum into a lot nicer image in Photoshop I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more video tutorials on this YouTube channel and visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on Photoshop, Lightroom, Elements, Illustrator and a whole lot more.